In today's video, I'm gonna be covering two new resins that I've never printed before. That's gonna be the Amerilabs TGM7 and XVN50. Now, both of these resins I had not used before making this video, but I definitely tell you at this point, I, I've learned some things about these resins that I'm really happy to share with you in this video. So stay tuned to learn, well, all the things that I've learned over the past few weeks. And this video is sponsored by Amerilabs, the creator of XVN50 and TGM7. They sponsor this video by sending me two bottles of TGM7 and one bottle of the XVN50. But a quick overview of these resins, kind of like what they're meant to do and what maybe they're not meant to do. So both of these resins, I would say, fall on the classification of uh, specialty resins. Specialty resins could be things like, like rubber resins or silicone, wax, things like that. These fall in the category of that one. The reason for that being is they're both very, very thick, very, very viscous resins and they're both quite flexible. The TGM7 being incredibly flexible, but the XVN50 being an engineering resin is still flexible for how tough it is. I decided to do these this little propeller right here. I did print the housing for it, so it's actually gonna be used in L, um, to clean the air in my 3D printing area that I'm building. I'm just waiting for the fan, the motor to show up, but I'll show some close-ups of this guy. I think it came out like beautifully. The blades are very, very smooth. It, this resin, I'll say one thing, is very, very easy to print. It just prints everything. It has such high tensile strength with that little bit of flexibility, makes it one of my more favorite resins I've actually ever reviewed. But I'll get the data to kind of show you what I mean later on. I also printed this Isaac Clark out of it. Now I know you're not really supposed to print this kind of stuff with engineering resin. You're supposed to print gadgets and hangers and hooks and all sorts of stuff like that. But I think that's kind of boring. Um, you know, I printed the fan to show you engineering, but Isaac here is an engineer. Also, he's got a battle monsters and it's also one of my favorite games I've ever played, Dead Space. And so I just thought it'd be really fun to do something like this. TGM7 is incredibly flexible. It's a specialty resin for sure. Uh, much more difficult to print. The supports, I had to definitely beef up not just the support tips, but the size of my support shafts in order to get stuff to start print, uh, to really print with the TGM7. That's because something that's very, very flexible is gonna have less tensile strength. And when we pull the numbers from doing the brake test, you'll see that towards the end of the video. All right, so the first test we're gonna do is the subjective egg drop test. We're just gonna drop them both and see how many times we gotta drop them before they break. Hopefully more than once. This is just a egg drop test I've caught online. And I'm gonna tell you, this test right here is a pain in the butt to print, uh, but I was able to print it with the TGM7. So if you can print this thing, uh, you can print anything. I'm gonna drop them from the same height at the same time. And let's see if I make a big mess on my desk. Let's go for it. <laughs> they both survived. Let's try it again. Oh, I lost a couple pieces off of the, the black one, the engineering resin here. Just a few little bits. This is crazy. Uh, oh, okay. No, all right, let's just keep going. I don't think this is gonna break. Oh my gosh, like, when I said this stuff is, you know, a specialty resin, rubberized, just doesn't break, this is what I mean. Let's give it a little force. Let me kind of throw it down a little bit. It's just like a bouncy ball. Let's throw it a little bit harder. There we go. I just I kind of had to toss it down quite a bit to get it to break. But there you go. So far, the egg drop test. That one beats any resin I've tested so far. Uh, let's clean this up and uh, move on to uh, less subjective testing. And more of the kind of pros and cons of these, and that's the price. Here in the U.S., just on Amazon, each of these bottles go for about $80 a piece. For an engineering grade resin, that's kind of normal. They get much more expensive. Some of them are cheaper, but there's some that get quite a bit more expensive for that type of resin. For like a miniature resin, like the TGM7, the $80 is quite a high price tag. But generally, if you're buying this resin, it's because you're like a professional painter or you know, you're someone who really wants your models not to break because your time and effort into doing them is worth more than if they fall off. You don't want them to break. Yeah, that's where that becomes a, a pretty good value if that's what you're in the market for. If you're outside of the US, I'm not sure what you're gonna pay for it. Uh, let me know in the comments down below. For this part of it, let's talk about accuracy and usability of these two resins. Uh, for one, I guess let's just remove some supports. I've got her shoulder pads right here, which also have some pretty fragile bits on them, so I wanted to print them out of the TGM7. So let's just go through and rip this off and see how well it goes. That was pretty easy. And it turned out really, really good. These little spikes right here are a little bit fragile, so are the feathers. Let's see, it should just go right on her shoulder right there. Gosh, it came off really good. I'll have to do some close-ups of these, but yeah, very little. So even the fact that I had to increase the support tip size to get it to really print really well, I still think they, um, there's obviously some support damage on the top, but it's pretty minor, pretty easy to sand right off. There we go. It goes right in. No sanding required. Uh, we've got the bow right here. We can remove the supports on this. Now this is obviously, there's way more fragile bits on this one, but let's see how it is. Let's just kind of rip them off. I'm being very violent with this. There we go. And nothing, nothing broke. Let's think about this one right here. Now we've got 
the XVN50 and a little mini right here. Same, uh, all the videos I've done so far, it's been the same mini right here. So I wanna take him off. That's a little bit tougher. And there we go. This has also got some flexibility, but not quite as much. The next one here is the little bird guy. Let's try to get him off. Uh, there we go. That actually came off pretty well. Did anything break? This XVN50 is so easy to print with. The supports just come right off, no problem whatsoever. So yeah, as far as removing supports, both of these resins, it's very, very easy, especially the TGM7, just because how flexible they are. XV50 is a little bit harder to remove, and that's kind of what I noticed printing this big stuff as well. It's a little bit harder to remove the supports from. However, it's actually pretty easy to use overall. The next thing about the workability is cleanability. It was kind of hard to clean. My cleaning process is I have four buckets of IPA that I wash everything through in about three minutes per bucket where I'm dunking it in and out of the IPA multiple times to flush it all out really well. I then run it through a um, ultrasonic cleaner for five minutes. I then remove the supports under some heat and then I run it under another ultra, a different ultrasonic cleaner for another five minutes. And also in the terms of usability is gonna be how easy is this stuff to calibrate? Again, the um, XVN50, I, did, I had 10 out of 10 pillars while the boxes were still too small. They were so loose they'd fall out. So I was actually able to just continue to increase UV exposure time, get more and more tensile strength out of it to the point where there is a lot of tensile strength in this resin. It's so easy to print. The downside of that, of course, of being with that high of exposure time. And while I have my computer out, I just wanna talk about the close-ups that I took of the two HD cubes of the two different resins. So first, let's start with the XVN50. Zooming in here, what I like to look at right here is actually this triangle that where the three uh, points touch each other. And what I like is about this, we've got really clean edges on that one. Very, very nice. The kind of the ribs here in the center, same thing, we have all the, all the ribs, they're printing all the way up. The one just above it, there's a little bit of swelling on that one. I'd like to see a little more separation there. So it's accurate, but not like crazy accurate when you get things that are close together, they do kind of fuse. Um, the pins and holes over here, I have all the holes and the holes on the second one are actually going in pretty deep. These things are tiny, microscopic. I'm gonna see what those fins look like on the TGM7. Uh, you can see the fins are there on this one. This one has all the pins and it has all the holes. However, you can see the holes are a little more filled in than they were before. These ones, more like you can tell there's a hole there, but you can't see any indentation. I will say this one actually did slightly better on the one where there were two shells really close to, to each other. It's not quite as fused, a little more open gap in between them. Overall, a pretty accurate resin. I mean, really good. This is this is like for a resin that's this flexible, I think this is very, very impressive. And then if we move over to the alphabet side of the cube, this is where I think it, it kind of shows the difference between these two resins where the TGM7 is quite accurate for a flexible resin. But when we zoom in and we just kind of look at the small letters the alphabets here, this very small row at the bottom, we're starting to get more filled in and the letters are just a little bit more pillowy, like they're made of jello or something. It's not quite as accurate as some other resins that I've, I've dealt with. And if we go over to the XVN50, this may not look very good because it's, again, it's really hard to take a photo of black resin. So there's a lot of weird light things going on that make it not look as good. But if you look at for like voxelizations or heart, chip, heart edges, you can see that there is much more clarity of the indented letters. The other letters are not, they're not very balloony. They're much more sharp. Overall, it is a more accurate resin. For the XVN50, they stated on their website that it was water uh, kind of resistant or you could use it in applications where there would be some water. So I decided to put that to a torture test where I let them sit in water for, it's been three days now since they've been soaking in water. So I'm not, I'm not sure if that's exactly what they mean that they can soak in water for three days or they can just be in a high humidity area. But anyway, we're gonna put that to the test. What I'm doing right here is it's just a shrink test where you can you know multiple places to measure. I measure them before I put them in the water. I also have some controls right here, each types of resin as well as like a little puck. I can just kind of weigh them. I weighed everything and I measured everything before I put it in there. So let me go through and just kind of dry these off so I'm not measuring water and just see how much uh, water they absorbed over three days. Number one shrunk, which is the XVN50, which wasn't in water. It uh, shrunk 5.4%, not very much. Honestly, within kind of measure, all these are, all the shrink swell tests are actually within margin of error, to be honest, they're very small. Uh, it shrunk over time, where number two that was in water grew by 0.03%. Percent, so it definitely did absorb some water, but very, very little. Number seven, this one was in the water. This is the um, the TGM seven. It's definitely much more flexible than number eight. Number eight's very solid, though it didn't show a lot of growth as far as like swelling up. 0.1 percent, very, very little. So I'd say it seemed like it did well, except for definitely got quite a bit more flexible than number eight, which weird. Number eight actually showed it growed as well. 
even though it was just sitting there and wasn't exposed to water at all. It's the only one that actually grew a little bit. That's the water test for the Amerilabs XVN50 versus the TGM7. All right, and now we're to what is probably my favorite part of these particular resin videos, and that's taking uh, my little parts right here and smashing them, breaking them in my machine right here. I'm gonna start with this one right here, which is the XVN50, a name I'm never gonna learn, and then the TGM7. My prediction is that the TGM7 on the bend test is actually gonna be the best one I've ever tested. It is incredibly flexible to a point where it's actually kind of difficult to use, it being a specialty resin and all. And that my prediction right here with the XVN50 um, is that it's gonna be one of the top performing for tensile strength, but not as well performing on bend. But anyway, let's bend and break it, put it in the spreadsheets, and see if my predictions are correct. And while I'm, oops, sorry, mister. While I'm doing these, I'm gonna put him right here. He's gonna act as my little bodyguard, so if pieces shoot out, they'll just hit him. And I think he's gonna be okay. He is printed out using the XVN50, because this is an engineering grade resin. He is an engineer, so he should be able to, he should be able to take a hit, right? I mean, he's also got this armor on to protect him from all the, the alien creatures that are coming after him, so he'll be my bodyguard. But let me get my safety glasses and we'll go from there. So those results are definitely something else. Nothing that I've tested has performed quite like this before in all the times I've been resin 3D printing. This one, of course, I couldn't get it to bend over and over again like I could the TGM7. However, if you saw, it was significantly harder to bend, like significantly. This is some tough resin that still has some bendability. While the TGM7 still was, it was a little bit difficult to bend, it was much easier, but I was able to bend it many, many times before it failed. Um, I think in this case, the data isn't really gonna reflect how good this resin is for at least these properties but we'll go through and do the tensile strength test and throw the data up there anyway, even though I think in the end, I'm not really running the right kind of test for this. I should be running a test that is putting a small amount of bend multiple times to see how many times this stuff can bend before failure, not just if it breaks or not under tremendous amount of bendability. For every other resins I've done, this test has been fine, but for this one, maybe I need to rethink how I'm gonna have to do some of this stuff in the future. But for now, we'll just keep going on with the tensile strength test. So let me swap this out and get going on that one. Now, something else to notate with these parts, I printed these about three weeks ago and I cured them the same time I cure everything else, but they've been kind of sitting out in the open for about three weeks. Now, if you don't know this, when you first print 3D resin, it's more flexible than it is uh, initially, and it will slowly degrade in its flexibility over time. About that first month is where you're gonna lose most of that. So this is not quite a month old, but it's getting pretty close, and it's still this flexible. So definitely holding up to its name and its reputation and the marketing. But anyway, let's swap over to the other test. There we go, that's all the testing done. So let's put this into the spreadsheet and look at the data. I think this one's gonna be a very interesting one. So I finished all my break tests and I've compiled the data and here's the sheets right here. This first sheet right here is where I'm stacking how much pressure it took to either to failure to bend or to break for the tensile strength test. So this is more of like a, how hard is it gonna be to bend this stuff or to break it? And right here you can see the Amer Labs down here um, at the bottom of the last two that I've, they're, they're not in sequence of how they perform, just in the sequence of which I've tested them. And you can see right here, they're actually doing pretty good. The um, XBN50 is in what, uh, one, two, three, fourth, uh, fifth place. And we can see the last two that I've added is the Amer Labs XBN50 and the TGM7. The Amerilabs XBN50 is actually doing pretty good over at fifth place. It has quite a bit of flexibility into it, so it would make sense why it's not gonna have the best uh, tensile strength when compared to other resins, which are much more, they're gonna, they're not gonna bend, they're just gonna kinda take a lot of force, and when they when you bend them a little bit, they're gonna kind of explode. And then the Amerilabs TGM7, it is a rather soft resin. It does make sense that it's down uh, here when it comes to the amount of force it takes to bend it. It does bend quite easily. Now let's look at the next one. This is stacked by distance at failure, not distance at break. I used to have this labeled as, as distance at break, but I've changed it because it didn't actually make sense when I thought about it. So what does it mean to failure? Well, the way that my machine works is that it's gonna push down on the bend test and eventually it's gonna continue to bend, but it's actually gonna take less force. The, the machine's gonna notice it takes less and less force instead of more and more and more. It determines that's the point of failure. And that's actually how it's been testing all the resins to make sure that some consistency between all the tests. But as we can see here, the Amerilabs XBN50 and the Amerilabs TGM7 do very, very good in this category. They do bend quite a bit. They're very bendy resins. Even though it doesn't take as much force as some other resins to bend them, they bend a lot and they keep bending. So it makes sense that they would win in this test. And so there we have it. Those are the two tests and kind of how they compare against some of the other resins that I've done. Another thing just to keep in mind, I know I've said it before, is that resins that 
are very, very tough to bend, generally are going to be more brittle, but higher tensile strength. Resins that are softer, like on the shore hardness test, that are softer on the shore hardness test, you could almost guarantee those ones are going to bend much easier. But of course, they're going to be much more flexible and very resistant to like drop tests or impact tests or anything like that because, well, they have a lot more at elongation of failure. Let's do a quick race between the two and see how long the round bend tests take me to break. One, two, three, three. Let's try this guy. One, two, three, three. Both broke on three, but this one was a little bit harder to move. This one much more flexible and pliable. But anyway, I think that covers it for this one. You know the drill by now. Like and subscribe to the Lighty YouTube channel so I can continue making content like this for you. <laughs> and if you could, please, if you haven't already, join us on the Lighty Slicer Discord so you can get help for resin 3D printing, filament printing, or just, well, have a conversation to me. I would love it if you reached out and said hello. And as always, thank you for watching, and have a good day.